Hello, Anatomy students. In this podcast, I'll be reviewing the bony landmarks of the thoracic and lumbar vertebrae. The 12 thoracic vertebrae, commonly referred to as T1 through T12, are located in the chest region and are unique in that they articulate with the ribs. They are bigger and stronger than the cervical vertebrae, having a larger vertebral body and vertebral foramen. Their transverse processes do not contain transverse foramina like the cervical vertebrae possess. Most thoracic vertebrae have a longer and thicker spinous process, which is also pointed inferiorly at a downward angle. They also have larger and longer transverse processes. Like in the cervical vertebrae, These processes serve as major attachment points for muscles. The transverse processes of the thoracic vertebra are unique in appearance because they contain the costal facets, the points of contact that articulate with the ribs. The bony landmarks of a typical thoracic vertebra include the large vertebral body, pedicles, which connect the anterior vertebral body to the posterior vertebral arch. The superior articular processes and superior articular facets, which are the flat surfaces, that articulate with the vertebrae directly above. The inferior articular processes and facets which articulate with the vertebra directly below. The vertebral foramen, which surrounds the spinal cord. The lamina, which are the flat walls making up the posterior vertebral arch. The two large transverse processes. The costal facets, which is located at the very lateral edge of each transverse process, and the posterior spinous process, also called simply the spine. The five lumbar vertebrae of the lower back, often referred to as L1 through L5, are the strongest and largest of the vertebrae, and compared to the other vertebrae, have shorter and thicker bony projections. The main function of the lumbar vertebrae is to support the weight of the body. The bony landmarks of a typical lumbar vertebra include the vertebral body, which is thick and oval-shaped and has the largest diameter out of all of the vertebrae. The pedicles, the superior articular processes and the superior articular facets, which are the flatter articulating surfaces. The inferior articular processes and inferior articular facets. The vertebral foramen the lamina, the transverse processes, which are large and blunt and do not have transverse foramina, and the spinous process, which is short, flat, and blunt. How can we tell a thoracic vertebra apart from a lumbar vertebra? In a thoracic vertebra, the two transverse processes, together with the spinous process, make an angle that is less than 90 degrees. The transverse processes are angled toward the spinous process. In a lumbar vertebra, the processes make an angle that is 90 degrees with the transverse processes having a more horizontal position. Also, the thoracic vertebrae, 
when held in the posterolateral position, looks like a giraffe's head. The spinous process forms the snout of the giraffe. The transverse processes form the ears. And the superior articular processes form the horns. When held in the same position, the lumbar vertebrae looks like the head of a moose. The spinous process forms the snout, and the superior articular processes, along with the transverse processes, form the antlers. The sacrum is the larger triangular bone that is formed through the fusion of five sacral vertebrae. Located just inferior to L5, the sacrum forms the strong posterior region of the pelvic girdle in between the two hip bones. Some of its landmarks include sacral promontory. This is a ridge of bone on the superior anterior surface of the sacrum. It is used as a landmark for measuring the pelvis during a woman's pelvic exam. The sacral foramina. These are a series of holes that run through the sacrum and allow passage of the nerves of the sacral plexus and blood vessels. If we turn the sacrum to the posterior side and take a look at the lower inferior surface, we can see the sacral hiatus. And this is an opening that leads to the sacral canal. This is a long passageway that is the continuation of the vertebral cavity. And lastly, there is the coccyx, or tailbone. This is found directly inferior to the sacrum and consists of a fusion of four coccygeal vertebrae. It resembles the tail of a rattlesnake. It serves as an attachment point for various muscles and ligaments.